Hello and welcome back to my Myrtle Beach real estate video blog where I'm bringing you relevant topics about our local real estate market and I'm here today with Bob Whetstone. Bob works here with me at the Hoffman Group and you know I've been hearing over the past several years of course all the questions about short sales. It's a very big topic and I've decided to partner along with Bob here at the Hoffman Group and the owners of the company, we put a team together of experts that all they do is short sales. And that's why Bob's here today. So I want to ask a couple of questions to the expert in short sales so we can kind of set the record straight and give you the most up-to-date information on what's happening today in our market revolving around selling property and short sales. So let's jump right in. And you know, my first question for you, Bob, is really I mean, why would a bank would why would they rather do a short sale versus, you know, just own the property and then sell it as a bank owned property. Tell the viewers a little bit about that. Sure. Um, um, money. The, reasons bank, uh, the reason a bank will accept a short sale and would prefer to dispose of the property that way is simply because it costs less money. Okay. Um, the, the cost to litigate, which is a foreclosure as a lawsuit, uh, is expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a delay. Uh, courts are, you know, clogged with these things and so uh, it's real simple. It saves the bank money and it gives them their property back in, in a better condition. And typically, uh, the bank is able to save somewhere around 25% in that transaction, which is the difference in what a foreclosure sells for versus a short sale. Okay. Makes a lot of sense, Bob. Now, there's been something that, that happened recently with the South Carolina Supreme Court regarding short sales versus foreclosures here. Tell us a little bit about what that is and, and what does that mean uh, to people right now that are in that position of maybe being a foreclosure. Sure. Um, on May 2nd, the South Carolina Supreme Court handed down a, an administrative order uh, that basically put a, a moratorium on primary residential foreclosures, meaning that if, uh, if someone is in default and their property is currently scheduled for foreclosure sale, or the bank has just filed a notice of foreclosure, mm -hmm. the bank has to offer a new program called a foreclosure intervention program, uh, and it's only in the state. Uh, and that causes an automatic delay or a stay in the foreclosure process. Uh, the choices for the bank are, at that point, to, uh, to modify the loan or potentially allow for a short sale. Mm -hmm. It takes participation by the borrower, but there are um, the court has basically said that uh, the courts are burdened with foreclosures, and there's two and a half times more than there were in 2009, and uh, people are losing their homes when they're trying to do modifications and short sales. So they've changed some of the rules in the game, and it has made for a much better environment for the consumer, and this is something that, that, is, that is very new, and so what we've done here at the Hoffman Group is we've put a team together uh, to where we could go out with our uh, with our attorney and with our, our lending partners and we can understand this and how we can help people here in this process. Right. So it sounds like good news for a lot of homeowners that feel a little hopeless or without options. There's there's some new options for them. Oh, no question about it. I mean, we speak to people every day and it is a, it, it is a game changer and it, it's particularly good if it's your primary residence. Right, of course. Now just, I know, Bob, uh, you've got some good statistics for us to really show us where we are today in terms of short sales, what percentage of short sales are actually happening and are they are we getting seeing more of them or seeing less of them? So I know you've got a few numbers you, you brought along that could share with us in closing. Sure. Um, short sales have uh, increased uh, year over year from the first quarter in 2010 compared to this quarter, 62 percent. Mm -hmm. So a lot more are going through. The system has become more efficient. Uh, when you know, when the market started to go down, banks had never really heard of short sales. Most people didn't know uh, how to, you know, to get one through. And so that process has evolved, and uh, we're seeing a much higher success rate with short sales going through. Uh, and then in those cases where we can't, in some cases we see modifications being offered. Uh, but short sale is the preferred method, not only for consumers, but for banks. Banks would much rather have you short sale the home rather than to allow it to go into foreclosure and those delays and those monies and costs uh, to get the property back. Great. Well, you know, I hope this has been helpful. I mean, obviously, Bob has a, a lot of experience and knowledge. And, you know, the bottom line for these blogs is to keep you informed. 
And so if you know of someone that is you know, in trouble or thinking that they may lose their property, you know, give me an email or shoot me an email or give me a call and we'd have an easy free consultation with you or with them uh, so to see if we could help them out of this and uh, make it as, as pain, painless as possible. So thank you for the opportunity today. Thanks for joining us. Thank you to Bob and I look forward to talking to you next time. Bye-bye.